So here we are again on the Gathering Heritage Project, and I'm joined by Harry and Larry. This week's subject is growing up in Dundalk. So I'm going to ho- hand you over to Harry Lee, who's going to talk you through his photographs. Take it away, Harry. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. This is uh, something we we're very, very interested in, just telling our little stories about a few pictures that we're going to, photos that we're going to put up. And the first one is, this is in Hill Street, where I was born. And it's the little house in the centre there, the grey one. Now, the tech spot, forget about that one, and forget about the red brick one, that little one in between. And as you can see, it's a very tiny little house because the upstairs window, which is blocked up, you can see, that was the room that the six of us slept in. And uh, five of us in one big, huge bed, five boys, and my sister, Brida, was in a single uh, bed in that room up there. Yeah. Now, downstairs... The, the window to the left, uh, looking at it, yeah, that was the front door. The same as the house beside it with the red brick. That's right. Now, so, the you know, when you look at it now, it's so tiny. And yet we never thought it was big or small or what we just lived in it. Lived very simple life. We, my father would uh, walk up off in the GNR and uh, didn't make a hell of a lot of money but we seem to be uh, okay when I'm looking back at it now I don't know how but anyway it was two bedroom house and uh, my father and mother lived in lived uh, they slept in the back room now there was a uh, I suppose you could call it uh, the Oh, oh, order and try to, there's a, a singer called and uh, she said in Big Feather Bed or something like that. Do you remember that song? And that, that was like us because we had great fun in it at, at this one time. And Outside how, toilet. Go how, ahead. Was there a, yeah. a room, a special nice room for the priest at the front? What was that called? Exactly. That's the parlor. That's right. the one next to the front door. Okay. And um, I, I wanted to just go to the important thing in it because the outside toilet, which right. fellas of your age group wouldn't have a clue about <laughs> Jason. You were, you were flushing from you were a child, <laughs> but we were grunting and groaning. But right. however, yeah, that room was the parlor, which we never lived in actually until the priest came or Christmas. And Christmas was a time that my father loved. And he used to put up decorations only in that house and no few okay. in the hall. But um, it was, um, the one thing that stands out about Christmas is he used to write on the mirror in there with soap, Merry mm. Christmas to everyone. We oh. had a great time. Behind that then, there was a little, people would call it a sitting room now, but it's where we did uh, the rosary at seven o'clock at night, where we had our dinner where we listened to the radio, where my father played a few tunes in the fiddle, and that was the living room. Okay. And out the back then, there was what we call a scullery, which was a kitchen, very tiny, and a yard. And that was uh, what we had in that house. What okay, let me, let me move you on, Harry. Let me keep you going yeah. with a few photographs to get through. Okay. Now, this is, we have very few photographs of uh, my dad. And uh, my dad was called, we were called Wee Harry and Big Harry. His name was Harry as well. He came from Dramiskin. And uh, we had, I was 14 when that photograph was taken there. So I, I suppose I was starting to think about uh, uh, girls and that kind of stuff. Now, you two wouldn't be at that <laughs> age, but I was well, well advanced. Yeah, but my father was a very, very quiet uh, kind of a man. He um, went up and down for years when he, before he was married, of course, from Dramiskin to the GNR on his bike. So he had a hard enough time. My mother died. I was just coming up to five and uh, there was two younger than me and there was three older than me. And he remarried um, again to the most wonderful woman. You hear bad bad stories about stepmothers, but we were very, very lucky. A lady called Alice Laracy, 
and she gave us her life right through until she was 80. And a wonderful, wonderful woman. Great, great memories of uh, the house in Hill Street. Now, there was, of course, a lot. We didn't move very much out of Hill Street, you know. Just Hill Street Bridge. And that was nearly as far, other than going to school into Mass, uh, that was where we played. The Pope Factory was there. The big street was there. No cars, of course, at that time, so we could play football and everything. And, you know, the Rampart River, where we... Yes. Uh, would, yeah. would the bridge be seen as a barrier between different, you know, for different... Ga yes, indeed, Larry, yeah. yeah. It yeah. was. The Dublin Street uh, fellas thought they see they were tough, but they wouldn't come over Hill Street Bridge. It's down at the bottom shouting up at us, you know. Mm. And, uh, but it, it was a great banter, and we still have banter with Tommy Grant and the boys, you know, and me, we so... But... Awesome. Um, you could talk forever about it. We had a great, simple, simple time in uh, Hill Street in the in that little house. Okay, now, Harry, I'll keep you moving. You move on to the next one, Jason. This is completely different now. This photograph is a wonderful photograph that was taken in um, 1991. Now, from the left, Larry will know a lot of these people, Damien Kenny is to the left there. Then a gentleman called Jerry Morgan, who was uh, in a band in Newry, and Andrew McQuaid, the wonderful Andrew McQuaid, who was president of the festival and very much involved in a lot of talent competitions. There's myself when I had a bit of hair, but the way I'm talking now, I've plenty of hair now. <laughs> and next to him was Jerry Murphy, Gemini. Gemini. Wonderful, wonderful man. And the far side of him is Gemini's brother, that's Jerry Murphy. And Jerry was a very good singer in the choirs and in the musical societies. Now, way back in the 1980s to the, all through the 1990s, the talent competitions were huge in uh, the town. And the crowds that uh, we used to get to them. Laurie, you probably, I suppose, would remember all of those talent competitions. I do, I remember them quite well, and they were excellent. Patsy Rogers uh, ran talent competitions, and then there was ones before that where there was factory. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the De La Salle ones yeah. and that. Yeah, but it, the other fellow, of course, was Owen Gray, and uh, Owen Gray did wonderful talent competitions up until a few years ago. So Patsy Rogers and Owen Gray were the two main characters. Now, I don't know why I ever got involved in adjudicating because I can't <laughs> sing. I, all I can do is talk. I can't play an instrument. And I was told that actually one night by a fellow that his daughter didn't only came second. And he came up to me, what that in the Liz do? And he said to me, what the, mm, are you doing adjudicating? I never heard you singing in my life. And I said, no, but I have ears to hear. So yes. I, I have not the hearing up. aids now. <laughs> Harry, one way, had, he run a club up in Ann Street, just up Dublin Street, and it was called the Valentino Club. And oh, it was, yes. It was probably built to hold about 20, with probably about 200 going to it, you know, <laughs> at the time. <laughs> But he yeah. got a great job. Oh. Yeah. And there was some, like, you know, when you think of uh, people like the talent of Paddy Breen and uh, Olive Connors and all of these people all went through the uh, talent. And by the way, Jerry Morgan, the chap in the white, he wrote a song for um, Don Martin for the Eurovision, I believe. All right. Okay. And it was called It's uh, All Over Now. And that was way back in 1988, so right. a long time ago. Okay, but Harry, that's a great memory. We'll move you on to your last photo. Yep. Now, my last photograph is Lady Well. Now, Lady Well, of course, now I'm going to ask you to, Jason, were you ever up? No, I want an, one more to answer. Were you ever up in Lady Well? Yes. J Larry, were you ever up in Lady Well? Never. Never. No, this is very, this is, no. Jason, were you ever up on the 15th of August? No, I wasn't. No, right. The 15th of August is one of the, the big uh, days, of course, of uh, celebration up in um, Ladywell. On the 14th, that night, and they have midnight mass, uh, loads of people 
But there's very few and dog people involved now. People came from Louth, Armagh, Cavan, Meath, Monaghan, and still do. It's a wonderful, wonderful, and go up to it when there's nobody there, even during the year. It's a lovely, peaceful kind of a place. We had great times up there, not only for uh, playing. There was trees and we played football and everything like that up there. But one of the uh, big things we had was trying to make a few bob on Lady Well Day because we used to sell bottles. We'd go round all the houses and ask people to have any empty bottles and we'd wash them and everything. And then a, a few of the bigger boys, of course, wouldn't let us. The way that photograph shows me, and there used to be a big fella there and he'd be filling the bottles, hoping he'd get a few bob. But what we tried to do was we used to fill it with water, uh, the bottles, and when the, the bikes and the cars and everything would come from all these places, we would sell them, buy a bottle full and all. But the blessing themselves and taking wee sips, but most of the river because the boys wouldn't let us do it down in, in the well. Okay. Well, very good. Harry. Oh, come That's on. Good. That was worth a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. But can I just finish very quickly on <laughs> Can I just finish very quickly on that? Uh, uh, my mother, who lived in Ladywell Terrace, uh, she was born and bred there and loved the whole thing about Lady Well. And my mother died an hour on the 14th of August. She died at 11 o'clock uh, up in a hilltop. And I went up on, on uh, to the uh, parade uh, walk, would always walk down to it. And I asked them, would say we prayer for my mother above. She was just after dying. She would have loved the time, the timing of that. Okay. No, that's my growing up and that's down. your growing up, that's your photos, that's your memories, and thanks very much. And we move on. Okay. So these are my ones. This is a span of about 20 years across Dundalk. This is a photograph of my class outside which church? Have a the guess. Redeemer. Redeemer. The Redeemer Church, exactly. Nineteen sixty eight. No, you're you're way off. 1979. Well, the taken. photograph might be the chapel was bought was because I lived out there. Right. It was built in 1968, Jack. Well, the, Go uh, ahead. Okay. Um, this photograph was taken in 1979, and I, I found it recently uh, online, and I was absolutely amazed because the teacher here, Tom Murphy, um, yes. two doors down from me, and I had forgotten that he was my primary teacher at the time because I think ta we... I was only in school uh, having Tom as the teacher up until uh, communion. And then after that, the teacher changed in the class. But a couple of things I remember about this. Where are you? In it? Where are you? I am there. That's me. In the Where? little, there, in the little red. Uh, uh, the uh, couple, red jumper. Uh, a couple of things about this photograph is there's 39 kids in this photograph, 39 kids in one class. So like you think about this class sizes nowadays, you'd never get away with that you know, for health and safety and education and all that. But it didn't seem like an odd thing back then, but there was 39 of us in the class. And the other thing is, I think I remember nearly everybody's name in the photograph because a lot of these guys actually went to the same secondary school as me after this, which was De La Salle. So, and, and I, I, so I was with them in secondary school as well as primary school. And I, Did any of them be, any of you become famous? Um, I'm trying to look. To, no, but there was a good few of them became infamous. Uh, <laughs> because, and you were one of them, yeah. Uh, it's not that, uh, looking back now, you know, uh, the school was based in um, Cox's Domain. And yeah. you had R. Desmond to one side and Cox's on the other side. So there was a hell of a mix of people. Now, I came from Cox's, but there was bank manager sons and dentist sons and everything. So my mother always said, uh, you know, there was a good mix of people in the class that came from all sides of the community. But um, that's why some of the lads in the photograph are wearing their, their communion um, outfits. I wasn't allowed to wear mine that day into school. It was put straight into the wardrobe and uh, it was for good wear. <laughs> so, so that was that. So that was it. Um, I have very strong Lovely memories. photograph. Yeah, yeah, I have very strong memories of uh, growing up in primary school. The church still looks the same. And I have to say, Tom Murphy, who lives two doors down from me, still looks exactly the same. 
I brought him down the photograph recently. He was delighted to see it. Well, go Very on good. to the next one. Go on to the next one, yeah. All right. This oh, is no. A... Listen, why? It is a pub. It's a pub. Oh, yeah. No. That, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't like pubs. I don't, I don't oh, like well, pubs. It's more than a pub. This uh, was the Green Acres Shopping Center. So this photograph was taken in 1984. And we moved from um, Cox's to Green Acres around about that time. Um, so I, I had lost all my friends then and moved to Green Acres. The houses were just being built in Villa Park. And I spent most of my time growing up as a kid, as a teenager, playing around these shops. It was the focal point for the whole community. Now, I did play sports. I played uh, Gaelic and I played soccer and I actually played rugby as well. But a lot of the time at the weekend, we were what's known as hanging around the shops. And what age were you? At, what age were you when you moved there? Well, I was. I think I was eleven-ish. I was around about eleven when, when we moved here, and uh, uh, I have a very clear memory of I started working in the Avenue Inn around eleven or twelve, collecting glasses. And um, my folks had a very strong kind of work ethic, so um, I, I I somehow found a job uh, collecting glasses. Far too young now when I look back and, and I look at my kids and I wouldn't even entertain that. But that's, that was the done thing. The Avenue Inn was the centerpiece of everybody who was living in the community. Everybody drank there. Except um, me. <laughs> except you. It was a really busy, busy pub. Um, at, the time, at the time when I first started working there, so, uh, Mrs. Briody uh, owned the pub. Oh, yeah. And then it was sold to somebody called Breach and Declan Rogers. And they, they bought it around 1989 or 1990. But there was a lot of little shops. There was a, there was a little amusement arcade here. Um, the first one that I, you know, well before the Isle of France or whatever. This turned into a pharmacy and stayed a pharmacy for all them years. The chip shop was there forever and a day. There was a fruit shop. Then there was a butcher's. And then there was... Uh, Corcoran's. Oh, no. Larrigan. Larrigan's. Lar it was Corcoran's. Then it was Larrigan's. Larrigan, yeah. Sorry, I'm missing one. There was a dry cleaner's here somewhere. In, I think oh, right. yeah. But yeah. Um, I do remember sitting. I spent a lot of time playing around the shops for good and for bad. When I got the job in the pub, I stopped hanging around the shop because, you know, the bad boys were hanging around outside the shop <laughs> causing trouble. And I didn't want to be part of that anymore. <laughs> but on the grass here at the front, Every summer, you'd have gangs of Spanish students. You remember them? Uh, Trong, uh, Trong and Dundalk. Yeah. And literally yeah. every family in Green Acres ha seemed to have a Spanish student. And they ended up sitting on the grass here um, because there was, there was actually very little to do. And, you know, they entertained themselves. So they somehow found themselves. Just you have quite, quite memories of your childhood, haven't you? Um, I do. Not like me, like, you know. Well, that's, I spent a lot of time. This was the kind of center area, Harry. So I spent a yeah, lot of time. Yeah. But I'll go on to the next one and maybe... Yes. Can I ask you a question on the pub? Yeah. Uh, when you were 11 or 12, when you were in the pub, did you drink? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> the truth. Larry, the truth. I did not. I did not. I had no interest. In fact, looking back, Larry, this Here was... This was before the smoking ban. So you can imagine the smell of my clothes. Where did you smoke? No, I never did. It put me off it for life. Guess, the jury is out on that. Right, okay. So, <laughs> that, so as I started getting older then, I was maybe 15 or 16, and I was heading downtown. This is the famous photograph of the Battern Ram Bridge. Now, we have put this up before, but yeah, and I was saying to you, you know, well, we did put up, up before and you said this was part of my life yeah because when i was heading up the town uh, every weekend you had to cross this bridge and um, you know this was the railway bridge across uh, across the railway and it was an unusual, the battered ram the battered ram yeah. it was an unusual yeah. looking bridge but say you're going uptown on a saturday and um you know you were heading uptown to spend a bit of pocket money but sure the place you'd be heading for was the shopping center here and as we said before, Harry, this was the Ashley Arms uh, um, restaurant up here. Um, sure, at, when I was 14 or 15 or 16, you know, uh, there was a real novelty in going to the shopping center. And then the cinema was next door. So the casino cinema was here. And you went in, you went around the corner to get into it here, into the casino. But um, I think this is a great old photograph of Dundalk because 
you know, everybody kind of had to go across that bridge. And if you look further up the town, um, the Hotel Imperial was up here. So you kind of, you know, made your way up Cambrassus Street or Park Street up to the Hotel Imperial and sat in there and got your, your cup of tea and coffee in the coffee dock. So I, I just remember passing here. And look, you know, to somebody who doesn't know it, it probably looks fairly bleak. But uh, I just have a lot of memories of going up and dark walking. Yeah, I, yeah, I suppose, Jason, when you look at it now, and it's gone, you know, yeah. I mean, it, and that's not, it's not a, uh, it's, it's a lifetime ago, all right. Yeah. But it, it's changed so much, isn't it? Yeah, somebody, you know, somebody yeah. who's under 20 looking at that now will just be amazed at that photograph. Yeah. That, that, that was the show. The shopping centres there now. The Larry, pillar- would you have come up? Would Larry have come up from uh, where you lived, Larry, up this end now to go to the shopping centre? Uh, very seldom. We we come a different way. But uh, I worked in Martin's garage uh, when I was there at the time, and uh, I have great memories of it. So I'll show you the last one, guys. The last photograph I have is of the square, and this photograph. Anybody tell when this photograph was taken? Uh, 19, the 19th. <laughs> we ever forget it? I can tell you exactly. Go on, Larry. Italian 90. This photograph was taken on the 25th of June, 1990, which is two days from now, 30 years ago. And uh, I reason I chose this one was this was, I had finished up uh, in school. Um, shortly beforehand, and I I was working in the Avenue Inn. It was one of it was one of the last years I was working there. And um, when the penalty shootout happened, I was working behind the bar. And when um, when the goal was scored, I jumped up, grabbed a flag. I was meant to be working seven points. Grabbed the flag and ran the whole way to the square to that crowd and jumped into the fountain. So. Um, I, 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 had, I was looking at this photo and I can't believe there were so many people, but I was only looking at it recently and I realized that I'm actually in the photo. So, Isn't you, is it possible for, oh yeah, I was going to say that, could you put it up, uh, make it a bit bigger there? Yeah, that, so uh, when, yeah, you zoom, even like, when you zoom in and look, that's me. Yeah. I'm standing there. I was wearing. Oh, is uh, that you? That's me, yeah. I was wearing a, um, a long sleeved white top over a Jack's Army t shirt and a pair of jeans, and there was, uh, there was some kind of a green hoodie as well. But that's me, yeah. I ran all the way to the square and jumped in, but I just thought it was a great time. Yeah. Uh, it really stays in my memory. Frank, Frank McAlevey took this photo, and it, along with about 15 other photos, and I recognized a lot of people in it, and I thought it was a great time. So, um, yeah, it was one of, these, one of these nights, of course, that everybody, uh, uh, women that never went to a football match or anything in their lives were out in the street dancing and everybody everything. Everybody remembers you know, right away. Then everyone's remember. Okay. Yeah. So, Larry, over to you. Well, Jason, yeah, Larry. Jason, Harry, that is the fair green, and it was the most wonderful place the, for lots of different reasons. Uh, you had circuses, that was Bertram Mills, Chipperfields, Duffy's, Fawcett's, all the circuses. And you also had carnivals every year, Tufts and other ones. And it was the most uh, remarkable place. Also, Larry, who was there owned by? Uh, the, the, the people of them dog, I think, by Lord Roden. And uh, All right. the village was taken over by, sold for, for, a, for a, I think, a shilling to the Christian brothers. And uh, I don't think they should have been able to buy it, you know, mm-hmm. but that's another story. Uh, there was petitions and protests, but it uh, came to no avail. But during, during the time when the carnivals were down, I think it was football played on it. Uh, yeah. Father Legion played on one side of the field uh, in, the, in their heyday. Uh, Rangers played on the other side of the field. And also you had Greenfield who played there. So there was lots of activity. Now, when I say football, if you go back in those days, there was a half day on a Thursday. And lots of people came from all over to be off work and they came down to play a game of football on a Thursday. The likes of Willie Coleman, Johnny Lennon, you name them, they were there. And it didn't matter how many was there, it all got playing. 
and uh, Harry Lee uh, tried. It, Harry Lee tried his luck hmm. uh, on one occasion. Came down. Unfortunately, I think he was more interested in selling shoes to the players. <laughs> you know? but, Harry, uh, Harry uh, Larry, who's the little girl in the photo? I think she. Uh, it could be a girl called Eccles. I'm not sure on that. Uh, All right, we'll keep it moving forward. Right. No, oh, there's a there's a lovely scene there now. Who's the is that Tommy Hoy? No, the vegetables. I'm not sure. It could be. It I could think be. that's Tommy Hoy. Yeah. And uh, tell, tell us about this photo. The on the far side you had Burton's, and uh, it was managed, I think, by a man called uh, Pat Fitzgibbons. And uh, that's right. Hey, do we mustache? Yeah. He was a lovely yeah. man. He, he lovely, was lovely bad. man. I think he played international badminton. Uh, That's at right. With the club. But uh, a lot of people could buy a suit there and pay two and sixpence or two shillings yeah. a week. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> and then some of them yeah. actually left to go to England to work, but then uh, they forgot about the, the bills. <laughs> <laughs> they were an English company, weren't they, Larry? Yeah, I think, yeah, they were indeed. But uh, the cows... Yeah. Uh, were dated at the time, you know, there was no Jaguars yeah. and they're all a nice car. But it was a meeting place for a lot of people who from one end of the town could walk up the town, what are we going to do? We'll go to the square. And when you get yeah. to the square, what will we do? We'll go back down and up and down and up and down on the Saturday. Yeah, that was like us in Hill Street. We didn't go over the bridge. You came up to the square. The square was the meeting yeah. place. Uh, the yeah, board. yeah. And a lot of people could stand and chat and meet people there because there wasn't a lot of space around the square. There was only a few wee shops there, but there wasn't a mm. lot of uh, area for people sitting. Yeah. At, there is now. Mm. It, it wasn't I, Larry, big. I know that that is Tommy Hoy. Okay. Yeah. That is a man called Tommy Hoy, and he did right. a lovely display like that all the time. I'm going to move on, guys. We're going to run out of time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's a wonderful photograph there of uh, McCann's delivery. I remember it well. There was a few different uh, bread men. I think that was Aaron Hughes. I'm sure it's him. And oh, then, from the Laurels. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it was Johnny Clark. And uh, they, they delivered the bread, or the bread all around the town. But it was only one of many things that was delivered by Horse and Clark, if you can remember. And also, uh, I, I remember Frank McWills with the, the hearse with the horse. That's right. I remember yeah. that. And the horse, has been, the horse has been fed there as well. Yeah, I do. I remember that. And yeah, I, lovely. And also then you had people uh, going around collecting bottles in jam jars. Probably, you probably saw them in Hill Street as well. <laughs> uh, Hollywood and... Uh, oh, yeah. He had a horse and cart. That's right, going around. Don't yeah. be Don't be... And card. What were the um, yeah. what, what were the jam jars and the bottles for? He for recycling. Uh, to be sent back to the the company. Uh, he lived up around the Imperial Hotel or something up there, didn't he? Yeah, uh, that's correct. He, he lived there, and then he yeah. the connection with St Nicholas Avenue as well. Yeah, because, uh, the donkey was kept in the, in the field behind St Nicholas Avenue, and it was called Monkey. <laughs> The donkey was called monkey. <laughs> monkey the donkey. Yeah. Larry, do you, do you know where that photo was taken? I don't recognise that street or that wall. Where was that it? That is the Laurels. Oh, Laurels, right, right. Laurels. Yeah. Hughes, I think, lived there. Aaron Hughes yeah, lived yeah. there. And uh, that was taken in the Laurels. And uh, there was lots of activity in the Laurels at that time. There was actually uh, a rock factory in it, down the lane. In when I say the laurels, the far side was out, that's what was called Griffith Place, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And down the lane there at Griffith Place, you had a rock factory and other things. Okay. So. All right, Larry, we'll move you on to your last photo. That was taken just at the big bridge. Now, when I say the big bridge, we lived the far side of it. And at that time, when you cross the bridge, you felt you were in the country because what you see there in front of you, uh, 
with was the most of the houses. When you went further out, it was green fields. Is this the uh, road, Larry? Yeah, Neary Road. Yeah. Okay. And you're you're over yeah, and you're over the hill at this stage, Larry. You're over the hill and you're in yeah. the country area. And to the right there, where the lorry is on the right hand side, uh, you can't see it. It's out of picture. It was a customs uh, clearance. Post. Okay. I, I know. I know where we are now, Larry. Is that the Liz Do? Yeah. Is that the Liz that Do? Is, Liz Do is correct and right. Right. And the houses in front of it are gone now. That was Maxwell's Terrace. Right. And Look at the, the smoke. Back. Look at the smoke coming out of the chimneys. <laughs> and uh, the, I, I want to say, if you look to the left of those houses, you see the back of other houses. Yeah. Small. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was uh, Maxwell's Cottages. Yeah. And if you see the wee skylights on them. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was reliably informed that during the, the time in 1920 and thereabouts in, in, in the time that there was people stayed there. And when they were in the house, the skylight was closed. See, the, 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 the army would be out and about and the, the, what do you call them, the police. But if there was somebody staying in the house, the one there where you have the pointer out there, that was closed, there was somebody in the house. And when that would be opened, that message would go across the water to St. Nicholas Avenue, <laughs> think, to say that the person had left. That was the, the way to communicate it. God. Open, half open, closed. They were able to tell messages. Okay. Or and Larry, did you live down here? No, uh, my grandparents lived okay, in the, so uh, it was in the end one. Was I think in the end one. Right. And uh, it's cool. funny. It's funny. There's a garage still here now. Yeah, it's the great uh, apple greens. There apple now. green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was Connolly's garage, as you see. And uh, I nearly got a job there. Yeah, right. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was either it was either going to Leeds to a nice clean job or go out to Connolly's to serve me time to be a mechanic, and I stupidly went into a shop. Well, listen, there you are. we'll we'll wrap it up there, guys. Um, it's amazing the way we've gone through three of our lives and the and the memories that stood out, and they were so varied, they were so different. Um, but we all and, and all very important to to us, Jason. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, for different reasons, it's amazing that what sticks in your mind. Like none of us, none of us had spectacular upbringings. None of us went on cruise liners. None of us were flush with money, and it was seemed to be the well, basic things and people. Uh, that... Jason, I often went on a cruise down the Castletown River. <laughs> in, in... I went and went up the rampart. Right. <laughs> or or uh, Benny Eccles boat. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Well, listen. Uh, I'm going to wrap dear. it up today, um, guys. Th <laughs> thanks very much for sharing your memories of growing up on Dundalk. Um, this was interesting. We might do it with some other people. Um, if listeners or viewers are want to see more heritage, they can go to gatheringheritage.com. And my thanks to Harry and Larry. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> Thank you, Jason and Harry. Thanks, Harry.